Welcome back to the Bible Breakdown Podcast with your host, Pastor Brandon. And man, this is going to be a good one today because it really gives us hope that even when bad things happen, God does not give up on us. He doesn't stop messing with us no matter what's going on. And so we're going to jump into this today. Before we do that, if you like what we're doing here, make sure you like this podcast, you subscribe to it, you recommend it to people. If you're doing this podcast on iTunes, make sure you give us a five-star rating. If you don't like this, uh, don't give us a rating, <laughs> but make sure that you are part of this. Also, we have started a Facebook group, and you can go on to Facebook and just type in Bible Breakdown Discussion, and I would love to hear some of the takeaways from the chapters that we're reading so we can grow together. So I want to jump into this because what this reminds me of is you know, in chapter 16, you know, the nation of Israel decided to turn away from God. They, they weren't going to obey what God was wanting to do, and it really turned out bad for them. But what I love about this is that God is still working to be part of their lives. He's still going to be talking to the duties of the priests and the Levites and what they need to be doing. And it's really, really awesome when you think about it, because how easy would it have been for God to have said, well, you're on your own? But he doesn't do that. He's still working with them. And it reminds me of my one of my daughters when she was really, really little. I, I walked into her bedroom one day. She was playing, and I, and I heard her, and I wanted to go in there, and I wanted to kind of you know play with her and whatever she was doing. And when I walked in, she was real little. She's still wearing diapers. And I had noticed that she had used the bathroom on herself and then took her diaper off and just smeared it all over the place. And I looked and I immediately saw this mess. And I want to tell you, with all the grace I have, I really, really wanted to just close the door <laughs> and just, um, you know, Lord be with you. Good luck. You know, just let this, maybe her mom will notice. You know, I, did, I didn't want to have to mess with this. But I decided I wasn't going to do that. And instead, I went ahead and opened the door and I went and I cleaned her up. Not enjoying a single moment of it, but that's what parents do, right? And I wonder, after chapter 16, if there was a little bit of that. If, if God wasn't such a good God, and if he wasn't perfect in every way, and the absolute essence of what love is, it, I almost wonder if that would have been God's reaction. Uh, let me just close the door, <laughs> and maybe another God out there will help you, right? But that's not our God. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And his very essence is love. Perfect love is found in him. And still in, so instead of closing that door and just leaving it for another God to clean up, the King of kings opens the door and he starts cleaning up the mess. And one of the ways he does this is by giving instructions to the priests and the Levites on what they're supposed to do as they are continually advocating for the people before him. So if you've got your Bibles with you, get your NLT Bible out, you've got your cup of coffee ready, we're going to jump into this. And the first several verses is going to talk about the duties of the priests and Levites, and then the support for the priests and the Levites. So here we go. Chapter 18, verse 1 says this. Then the Lord, remember every time it's capital L-O-R-D, it's Yahweh. The, then Yahweh said to Aaron, you, your sons, and your relatives from the tribe of Levi will be held responsible for any offenses related to the sanctuary. But you and your sons alone will be held responsible for violations connected with the priesthood. Bring your relatives of the tribe of Levi, your ancestral tribe, to assist you and your sons as you perform the sacred duties in front of the tabernacle of the covenant. But as the Levites go about all their assigned duties at the tabernacle. They must be careful not to go near any of the sacred objects or the altar. If they do, both you and they will die. The Levites must join you in fulfilling their responsibilities for the care and the maintenance of the tabernacle. But no unauthorized person may assist you. You yourselves must perform the sacred duties inside the sanctuary and at the altar. If you follow these instructions, the Lord's anger will never again blaze against the people of Israel. I myself have chosen your fellow Levites from among the Israelites to be your special assistants. They are a gift to you, dedicated to the Lord for the service in the tabernacle. But you and your sons, the priests, must personally handle all the priestly rituals associated with the altar and with everything behind the inner curtain. 
I am giving you the priesthood as your special privilege and service. Any unauthorized person who comes too near the sanctuary will be put to death. And so what he's saying is, is he's saying, hey, don't forget, I've still got a big job for you to do, but I have gifted you with the Levites to help in this. And so in in my mind, it's like after chapter 16, everything's just chaos because now we're not going to the promised land, all this kind of stuff. And then chapter 17 happens. And so now what God is doing in chapter 18 is he is reorganizing. Hey, guys, I've still got a job for you to do. I still want to be connected to the nation of Israel. And don't forget, you have each other to get this thing done. Okay, so here we go. Verse 8, the Lord gave further instructions to Aaron. I myself have put you in charge of all the holy offerings that are brought to me by the people of Israel. I have given all of these consecrated offerings to you and to your sons as your permanent share. You were allotted the portion of the most holy offerings that is not burned on the fire. This portion of all the most holy offerings, including the grain offerings, sin offerings, and guilt offerings, will be most holy, and it belongs to you and your sons." You must eat it as a most holy offering. All the males may eat of it, and you must treat it as most holy. All the sacred offerings and the special offerings presented to me when the Israelites lift them up before the altar also belong to you. I have given them to you and to your sons and daughters as your permanent uh, share. (laughs) Sorry about that. Uh, And any member of your family who is ceremonial clean may eat of these offerings. I also give you the harvest gifts brought by the people as offerings to the Lord, the best of the olive oil, new wine, and grain. All of the first crops of their land that the people present to the Lord belong to you. Any member of your family who is ceremonially clean may eat this food. Everything in Israel that is specially set apart for the Lord also belongs to you. The firstborn of every mother, whether human or animal, that is offered to the Lord will be yours. Now, pause real quick. When he means everything offered to the Lord that is human, remember, he's not talking about human sacrifice here. He's talking about how they would bring the firstborn male to the tabernacle and they would offer offerings to say thank you for that. So I just want to make sure I put there, he's, he's talking about the offerings that you give as a way to say thank you for that firstborn person. Okay. You must also uh, redeem your firstborn sons and your firstborn of all ceremonially unclean animals. Redeem them when they are one month old. The redemption price is five pieces of silver as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel, which equals 20 garas. However, you may not redeem the firstborn of cattle, sheep, or goats. They are holy and have been set apart for the Lord. Sprinkle their blood on the altar and burn their fat as a special gift, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. The meat of these animals will be yours, just like the breast and the right thigh that are presented by lifting them up as a special offering before the altar. Yes, I am giving you all these holy offerings that the people of Israel bring to the Lord. They are for you and your sons and your daughters to be eaten as your permanent share. This is an eternal and unbreakable covenant between the Lord and you. It also applies to your descendants. And the Lord said to Aaron, Your priest will receive no allotment of land or share of property among the people of Israel. I am your share and your allotment. As the tribe of Levi, your relatives, I will compensate them for their service in the tabernacle. Instead of an allotment of land, I will give them the tithes from the entire land of Israel. Now pause for a moment. Now, remember, the tithe was what was brought by the nation of Israel. 10% of all they had was brought to the tabernacle. Now, we're going to see much, much later in the book of Malachi that God continually, even after there's a temple, tells the nation of Israel to bring all the tithe into the storehouse. Why? Because that was how he would care for those who do service in the ministry to the Lord. Now, in our New Testament setting, that is still what happens. When you have people who serve the Lord and serve the people of God, they receive from the tithe of the people of God to compensate them so that they are able to continue the ministry to the Lord. And this is the way that God has set up his economy so that the people who are ministering before the Lord to the people can also be blessed and compensated for their work and their ministry. Okay. 
Let's read that again. As for the tribe of Levi, your relatives, I will compensate them for their service in the tabernacle. Instead of an allotment of land, I will give them the tithes from the entire land of Israel. Verse 22. From now on, no Israelite, except priests or Levites, may approach the tabernacle. If they come too near, they will be judged guilty and will die. Only the Levites may serve at the tabernacle. They will be held responsible for any offenses against it. This is a permanent law for you. It will be observed from generation to generation. The Levites will receive no allotment of land from among the Israelites, because I have given them the Israelites' tithes, which will be presented as sacred offerings to the Lord. This will be the Levites' share. That is why I said they will receive no allotment of land among the Israelites. The Lord also told Moses, Give these instructions to the Levites. When you receive from the people of the Israel the tithes that I have assigned you as your allotment, give a tenth of the tithes you receive, a tenth, a tithe of the tithe, as to the Lord as a sacred offering. The Lord will consider this offering to be your harvest offering, as though it were the first grain of your own threshing floor or wine from your own wine press. You must present one-tenth of the tithe received from the Israelites as a sacred offering to the Lord. This is the Lord's sacred portion, and you must present it to Aaron the priest. Be sure to give the Lord the best portions of the gifts that he has given to you. Also, give these instructions to the Levites. When you present the best parts of your offering, it will be considered as though it came from your own threshing floor or wine press. You Levites and your families may eat this food anywhere you wish, for it is your compensation for serving in the tabernacle. You will not be considered guilty for accepting the Lord's tithes if you give the best portion to the priests. But be careful not to treat the holy gifts of the people of Israel as though they were common. If you do, you will die. Now, what I love about this is, once again, it gives honor and dignity to the Israelites that they are able to give to the Lord. When they give that 10% to the Lord, they give it to the Levites and the priests, and then the priests are able to compensate themselves, and they're able to then provide for their families, but then they also have a chance that they can give as well. And so there's always this idea in the kingdom of God that freely as you have received, freely give. And I love that even after the chaos of chapter 16, God is saying, let's continue to do life together. And so remember, the overall goal of the book of Numbers is a nation learning how to trust in the Lord. And so I'm curious, what do you think from this chapter? How can we learn to trust the Lord from this chapter? Well, I tell you, to me, I can see that even when the worst happens, we can trust that God's not going to give up on us. Just like my story at the beginning, how I would have, <laughs> how I would have loved to have just kind of closed that door and let my poor daughter kind of fix herself. I realized that as the dad, I need to go in there and I need to help her. And what it reminds me of is even when the worst happens, I can trust the Lord that he's not going to abandon me, but he's going to continue to father me. He's going to continue to lead me no matter what. I just need to be willing to hang on to him. And one of the things that we need to always remember is that God never gives up on us. Well, I want to know down in the comments below, or I want you to go to our Facebook group and let me know what you got out of this chapter. I pray that God will continue to speak to you as we read this. And so I want to pray for us. And then I want us to read Numbers chapter 6 together, the promise of this whole book. And then we're going to be done for today. So let me pray. Father, thank you that you never stop fathering us, never stop working in our lives. I pray, God, that in all things we'll know you more and we'll know that even when the worst happens, you continue to work in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Don't forget, God's promise, Numbers chapter 6 says, may the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. I love you. Hope you have a great day.